Hey folks, thanks for joining me. So in this video, I'll be repairing my Wharfdale SPC-10 home subwoofer, which didn't survive when my wife and I recently moved house. Uh, it was working fine before we packed up, but uh, once we settled in and I started setting up our home theater system, it just didn't seem to power on. So coming up, I'm gonna take a look inside and try to find the fault and make my repair. Anyway, enough waffling, let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see, I've already taken it out. Um, this is about as far as I got. It was a bit of a pain getting this control board off uh, from down here as the, I guess the, the inputs here were wrapped in this little foam that was stuck to the front. That's never gonna be the same again, but uh, I might just need to seal that back up. I'm assuming that's just sealed up to, you know, assist with the, uh, air tightness of the, the subwoofer module, but um, yeah, I'll have to probably re-glue that when I put it back together just to, to get there again, but uh, yeah, for now it's fine. We'll, um, we'll see what we can do. So the biggest issue with this board at the moment is it's not turning on, so I've got it unplugged for now. What I might do is just plug it back in and plug it into some power. So let's plug this in, it's off at the moment. And we'll have a look. Now, this light should turn on. Nothing. So we get no, no smoke, no nothing's emitted, but yeah, definitely no power. And what I might do just to double check there, just balance that precariously. Grab out my meter. Just turn it on. Should be able to see that there, okay. Now, on the board, there's some markings just in here that show that this side here is 15 volts plus 15 volts and this pin here is ground. So if we probe those two pins, you can see we are getting absolutely nothing. So there's definitely something amiss there. Let's unplug that. Pop this board off. And let's see what we can see. So one thing that I'm gonna have to do is probably take this power board off. And also, okay, oops, move those pins up. There we go. Probably going to want to be very careful of these caps because they are 680 micro 200 volt. They're going to hold quite a charge. All right, let's have a look at what we need to take off first. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, so that's that would be the power transistor. That's right there. So this is the high voltage side, so let's put that away from me for now. Where are those big caps? So that would be these pins right there. Hmm. Need a safe way of de discharging those. Uh, let's see. Get some. Oh, yeah, I've probably used that discharging something before. So that's a pair of 5 watt, 5.6 ohm resistors. Make sure those are tight together. Hmm. This is dangerous. <laughs> Whoop. Yep, nice and sparky. Okay. Yep, yep. Little spark. Okay. Cool. So that helped. I'll just uh, double check that there's no voltage across those. Is my multimeter still? Yeah, one volt. That's fine. Okay. Safe as I can make it. So let's. Pop these under there. Now let's take a good look. I don't see any damage on the bottom. 
let's trace out the front first, so let's just, I mean, just immediately check if there's any, if there's any dead shorts in the main power. So now we're getting a decent amount of resistance there. Goes into that goes through that one. Here into these, these would be class Y's. Yep. X twos even. Some inductors over into a bridge rectifier, and then from the bridge rectifier that goes into the caps, and then from the caps that would go into a this would be a switch mode, and that would probably be our switch. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I think I see the problem already. So I don't know if you can see that, but that in there would be our switch mode transistor, and it looks like the corners blown off it. Hmm. Alright, let's um let's take that guy out. This might be an easier diagnosis than I anticipated. Woof. <laughs> yeah. Look at that burn. That looks like it went with a bang. Oh <laughs> Split entirely in half as well. Mm hmm. Okay. And you can see all the ugh, scoring and char marks on the components around it. Yeah, so that popped real good. Right, let's see if we can see what you are. Where's that? T... TQP261Y. Hmm, okay. No, I mean, I'm definitely not going to have one of those in stock, so I'll have to uh, order that guy, but... Oh my god, you can see that. Oof, yep. It's completely gone. I was going to say that you can see the... Um, this leg here is completely taken off. Hmm. Okay, well, let's fire up the iron and uh, remove that. Well, what's left of it? So let's have, also have a bit of a look around because I mean there's got to be some reason that it popped. Hopefully it was just that one device that was damaged and it hasn't either been caused by something else or cascaded onto anything else. Because having a look around that area everything looks fine. But that's the tricky part is you really can't tell. Looks alone can be deceiving. Like I said everything else looks pretty Satisfactory. Hmm, quality Capzon capacitor. I really hate it when these companies use bottom dollar. Like, you've got Rubicons over here. I guess this is on the audio side. That's just on the power side, but still, like... Hmm, those would be down. Power regulators to give those 15 volts. What are they? Yep, 7915. And I'm guessing that'd be a 7815. Yep, sure is. That's our plus and minus 15 rail. Hmm. I don't know what those would be down in there. MOSFETs of some kind. Maybe not. MOS something. 
Yeah, I can't really see. Okay, well, um, I can't see anything wrong. I don't really want to try and test anything. It just doesn't... Okay, I'd have to remove all of these resistors and inductors and diodes and whatnot to give them a proper test, so... I think I'll just leave that as is. And we'll try and figure out exactly what this guy is. Let's see if we can get... No, you won't focus on that. There you go. TQ pants. Let's try a ridiculous zoom on this camera. TQP 261Y. Yeah, is it TQO? TO? Yeah, it is. It's TOP. Okay, that's better. TOP 261Y. Alright, so I'll um, pop a data sheet up on screen and I'm sure I'll edit in my voice saying it is a offline flyback switcher chip here um, but uh, yeah until then I'm gonna have to put this aside and see what I can find all right it's a little bit later and uh, good friends at China have come forth with a replacement TOP 261YN uh, chips. So let's see about popping one of those in there and uh, checking if it'll work. So I ordered four just in case these were duds because you never really know what you're getting. But they all look pretty good, roughly the same. They came in China's best anti static protection so hopefully they still work <laughs> again you just never really can tell uh, so let's have a look at getting that in place <laughs> I actually recently got a complaint on uh, my comments by a viewer stating that I don't heat the pin and the via long enough. I just put the iron on and dump solder in until it melts. Which on that video is true because that was where I was pulling crap resistors, crap uh, capacitors from an amplifier and I really didn't care about the quality of that board or the repair. Uh, Sometimes it's fine. Sometimes it's not. All right, well, there's our fix. <laughs> Hopefully. Put the new transistor in place. Let's pop the heatsink on. Get my cables out of the way. And see how it goes. Um, what I can do is test these pins here, which as I, I think I did that before, which were the ground and the 15 volt rails. So I'm going to buy multimeter again. Pop that on. Just power cable down here. Let's plug you in. That's our mains. Power's still off. Plug this in. Now we'll turn this on very gingerly and facing it away from us. Nothing exploded. So let's see if we have power here. Very carefully probing. And we still have nothing. So that could be just because I don't have the whole thing back together. Don't know. So could also be that didn't do anything. Hmm. Okay. We popped a replacement transistor in, and we still don't get power. Alright, I think we're going to have to get a bit more dangerous. So let's pop these guys off again. Uh, 
Now I really don't condone what I'm about to do, but it is kind of the only way to test. So let's pop this, I'm just going to use the big This is our high volt side. Okay. Let's plug you in to power. And we are on. We'll switch there. So this is now live with mains. So I have to be very careful. Okay. Let's go to AC. And let's just double check that we have AC there. Yep, yeah, there's our 240 coming in, okay. So now, 240 comes across, uh, no, jumps there, comes up the side to the bridge rectifier here, so should be the two inside of the AC. Yeah, so that means that if we go back to DC, we should get the DC output on the side. Yep, yeah, so there's our positive, and this is our negative. So let's double check that again. Yeah, we should get our 330 ish or so volts. Yeah, typical uh, bridge rectification from 242, 325, 330, something, something around that range. So our caps here, that's our positive. So this will be our ground of these caps. So they're charged up to 170 volts. 170, yep. And then it should be coming over to, this is the big coil, we should be getting voltage over here, so that's our, these would be our, these ones here would be our uh, 7, 8 and 7, 9, 1, 5, the 15 positive and negative 15 volt rails. So judging by the ground plane being in the middle, I'm going to say that's the 7805. Nothing. Hmm. Nothing on the 7915 either, so there's no voltage coming through on this side. That's interesting. Hmm. There's somewhere on the high voltage side we're not getting power across. Okay, let's flip that off, because I'm anxious. Let's unplug that to be sure. Let's have a quick feel. So this is getting warm now, so that's something. Hmm. Maybe one of those diodes is dead. Maybe this coil is burnt out. Hmm. Human. There you go. All right. Now, from before, I still have my magic discharger. <laughs> So let's uh, pop that across those capacitors again. Wish I could get a distance away. Nope, not holding a charge at all at the moment. Which is good because that means that the rectification, not the rectification, the uh, switch mode power supply is actually doing something there. So what we should do, and it's, sorry, I should finish that thought. Uh, it's this circuit here is actually running now, whereas previously with the uh, the old uh, blown transistor, it obviously wasn't. So 
that means it's actually draining those capacitors just through use while it's uh, once the power comes out, which is good. It's a step in the right direction at least. But still no closer. Problem is this is also a two-sided board. And it's really kind of hard to see where stuff goes on the top layer here through all the components, so I'm only just making guesswork from the bottom side. And of course, uh, Wharfdale doesn't make this SPC-10 uh, service manual available. There's got to be a support component of that guy that's failed. So, the output of the, these pins here, up this side of the coil here, goes through these diode, shock diode packs, which are these guys here. And that gives us our big rails, which would come down through a bunch of capacitors and whatnot into our five or 15 volt regulators, which powers the rest of the circuit. Yeah, okay, so I need to find out if we're actually getting voltage on the outside of these diode packs. But it didn't look like it, so it might actually be a problem here. Okay this rather large coil. Okay, let's try that again. Let's get our power board in, plugged in, and plugged in, everything out of the way, and we'll flick you on. Nothing exploded. Let's turn it back off again because I want to flip this over. Okay. So I want to look around here. So between the middle pins here and the outside here, we should have something. Yeah, okay. So I think that's our problem. We are charging this coil quite well, getting 300 something DC, but this guy's not doing its job. Maybe these didn't work after all. Well, perhaps one of these diodes is busted, so let's try that. Let's check between these two pins here. I know this isn't going to give a great response because we are in circuit. But let's check the diode. Yeah, that's fine. And there's another one over here. Yeah, that's fine. see anything else wrong. Well, nothing else is obvious. Like that one's blown up. It's over there in three pieces. Plus all the wires, so. But everything else looks pretty healthy. So I'm not quite sure where to start.
I'm not really sure what else to do from now. Um, I would need to do some further deep investigation um, and probably learning because, I, like I said, I don't really understand how this board works and how this part that I replaced interacts with the rest of the components. I'm just kind of guessing at this point. So I may have to go do some more research, try to figure out exactly what this circuit does fully um, so that I may diagnose other components. Okay, so um, I've done a little bit of research and I genuinely cannot find anything on this board on the internet. Um, it looks like either no one's repaired them, which I know people have repaired them, but uh, they haven't shared what they've found online. But I found a uh, local distributor in Australia for spare parts for this and asked what the SPC-10 board was to get replaced and they quoted me $375. So yeah, I'm gonna have another run at this. Um, I've obviously got the heatsink off and this is the uh, the TI, TOP, I can't even remember, TOP261YN uh, control chip that I replaced before but it's yeah still not generating power so um, since then, I think I've changed a couple of capacitors and just futzed about with it a bunch, but no real avail. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much just, I mean, generally today, I think I'm just going to go component by component until I find something. So, uh, what I'm going to do for now is get my multimeter in ohms mode, and I am just going to go around and see if I can find any dead shorts I suppose so uh, I'm probably gonna leave this area because this is mostly support components for the actual amplifier chip I very highly doubt we're gonna see any shorts there and I mean we've got all these these are like bulk capacitors almost and I mean they're all on the same we're not yeah that's what a capacitor charging looks like so that's fine and I've got some like resistors here. Uh, looks good. Bunch of capacitors. So this is all just bulk filtering and power and whatnot for the uh, amplifier. So yeah, I'm generally going to focus my attention on uh, this side of the uh, of the board here. So that should be dead to nothing. Okay, we've got this cap here. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Where's this cap? Why are we getting. See that? That is a short. Yeah, huh. So where does that go to? That goes to that pin. Goes through there to this Zena. And it goes to the opto isolator. Around the Zena. Yeah. That's in shorted. Huh. And then the opto isolator goes nowhere. And there's absolutely nothing else on that line, so it must be must be the Xena. Hmm. Okay, well let's take that out then. Didn't expect that, but yeah, here we go. Okay. What is that? That's um, these guys here. Hmm. 
It's either this Zeta or it's that capacitor. I think the Zeta is going to be a bit easier to take out. Looks like it should probably be those. There we go. Okay. So, um, let's just use that capacitor. Just double check that the uh, that it's now opened. Hey, look at that. So that's exactly how it should look. Capacitor charging. Which means this Zena is bursted. Yep. Look at that. One point three ohms. How about that? Okay. Well, what have we got? We have a uh, 1N4740A. One 1N4740A. Okay. 1N4740A. Voltage. One and four, what are you? One and four, eight, one and four, one, four, eight. I'm not quite let you guys. One and four, seven, four, nine, four, seven. Eh. That year. No, you're way too small. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, it's not perfect, but let's give this one a try. It'll do for a bodge. 4740 and this is a 4749 so yeah I don't, don't know if it's going to be that critical but oh hell I just don't know so that was going that way yep there's the there's the marking on the board to indicate the line so I'm bending about there it looks like Mm -hmm. Enough for a quick bodge. If it works, I'll order some of whatever that is and uh, replace it with the real one. Here's my cutters. Okay. Let's get all this out of the way. Let's find the get the base plate in here and try to remember how it works. Oh yeah. Alrighty, and then we need um which that's right we're testing 15 volts here okay so let's plug that into power and then we'll be very careful about being there let's grab our meter mm -hmm. looks like you can see that's good switch it on and hope nothing pops oh can hear it doing things now that's different so let's go to ground well we have some voltage not enough though mm -hmm. hey look at that 15 volts and negative 15. <gasps> i think we fixed it oh that's terrific So it was that Xena that was the problem. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe that. All right, I'm just going to be very careful. This probably still has a good charge in it. So I don't know if you could hear that through the camera, but I could hear a definite um, switching, I guess, to explain it um, from that. Uh, from that transformer. Uh, let's just double check. Where are you? You are. That one? No. 
There you are. All right, so these, yeah, these capacitors have discharged. Okay, cool. Board is safe. Just wanted to make sure those these big, big guys didn't kill me if I uh, touched anything while I was putting this back together. Okay, so. Gonna do this quickly and I'll probably speed through it for the video. And I'll see you again in a minute. So, uh, one thing I thought I might actually show you out is um, one, of the th one of the things that I do is I got these little grey trays from Ikea a little bit ago and they actually serve to be pretty good just little component trays just to keep my projects together. So, when I um, put them away on shelves, if I need to get out something I can just grab that tray and it's got everything nice and stored and I've got this little screw tray I think I got that from Muji which is a uh, Japanese kind of wares store but yeah so let's uh, got this out onto a tray nice uh, You can tell how long it's been since I've done this. There's so much dust accumulated on this tray. I did leave this on my shelf for quite some time. And uh, yeah, I've just been missing the subwoofer in the in the living room, so figured I'd spend a bit of time tonight to get back into it. And then I just completely lucked out finding that dead Xena. So I'm still not actually sure why that was a critical component. Um the ins and outs of switch mode power supplies are still an absolute mystery to me. Um, if anyone has any hints or guides, whatever, um, if you have any thoughts on what in particular that Xena there did in this type of circuit with that type of power transfer chip, I'm all ears. Um, I mean, I lucked out, like I said, by finding it and all I was searching for was shorts. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, I happened to to find one, so that was very fortunate of me. Uh, definitely can't use this as a guide to repair these in the future because I don't know what I did. But hey, if you have one of these and you want to try to figure it out, maybe look for dead shorts. I mean, the completely cracked in half power transistor was. Well, that was a flyback flyback transistor. It was um, definitely a uh, giveaway of something wrong. And I am going to have to come back at some point in time and replace that Xeno with an actual matching module because I yeah I didn't put the right part in there. I just put in the closest one that I could be bothered finding in my drawers that I had on hand. But I will reorder the, um, the legitimate, the actual part. Pull this down again and resolve that. So that should now be ready to go back together in the box. So I'm gonna do that and uh, give it a full test run. Sorry for the shaky handheld here. I just wanted to um, show you that I jumped the gun putting this back together because uh, the enclosure here has leads for the top board this pin connector and that actually goes under there so I'm gonna have to take this off again and then connect that up in there and then put it all back on so yeah that just goes to show how long it's been since I pulled this apart that I completely forgot about that so yeah okay so I've got this plugged back in it's all wired up as we can see we got power and I don't know if that's coming through, but it's actually moving. As you can see, you've got the controls at the top here that are all 
also lighting up. So yeah, job well done. Back on the bench just for a little bit of a recap. Um, yeah, so that's working now, which is absolutely terrific. Um, uh, yeah, I just looked through my emails to just kind of wanted to double check that I had that uh, figure right, and I was actually wrong. The the Wharfdale representative or the the distributor in Australia actually quoted me two hundred and eighty five sorry three hundred and eighty five dollars uh, plus twenty two dollars postage and handling to get the re the whole replacement board out. And uh, yeah, so instead, what I did was found one component was exploded, which was the I don't have it anymore, but. Uh, this is the replacement, the TOP 261YN, which uh, is the flyback something something. I can't remember exactly what it is, but this was obviously split in half, so I replaced one of those. And I got these, I got four of them off AliExpress from China. Uh, and that was $12.54 delivered. And then the other thing that I found was the Xena diode here, um, which I just replaced that with a spare from my parts bin that had been there for god knows how long so I don't even know how much that costs but a Xena single Xena diode is not expensive it's a couple of cents at most type thing so yeah 385 plus postage and handling or 10 bucks bless this is kind of uh I guess where the uh, the whole right to repair movement is going at the moment as well especially because the like the circuit diagram for this was nowhere to be found and I couldn't even find help online for anyone else that had attempted a repair on this so i was really was in the dark like you know i've been i've been doing some repairs on monitors and uh, these these the older older devices from the 80s and whatnot actually had the, the full circuit diagram included with it was in the manual for christ's sake so uh, you know having such a component a, a, such a simple component level repair uh, be possible on this device but the distributors want nearly four hundred dollars to replace it's just wasteful yeah. anyway that's what i did it's working now sounds fantastic thanks for watching <laughs>